Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive with us. Today, um, we're going to be doing things a little differently. Oh. Yeah, we're going global. Okay. And exploring the world of AI. All right. But specifically, how Canada is really starting to make waves. Interesting. Yeah. So we found this really interesting article from Tataka. Okay. It's called Investing in AI, Why Canada is Leading the Way with Innocite MTL. I've heard good things about that one. Yeah, and I gotta say, it's packed with insights. Yeah, it highlights a fascinating trend, I think. For sure. You know, while Silicon Valley might be the first place that comes to mind when you think of tech and innovation, right? Canada, and particularly Montreal, is quietly becoming a powerhouse in the AI field. So paint the picture for us. Okay. Why is everyone suddenly talking about Canada and AI? Well, think of it this way. Okay. Creating cutting edge technology requires more than just brilliant minds. True. You need resources, support, and a network that can help transform ideas into reality. Yeah. And that's where Innocite MTL enters the scene. Okay. It's a startup accelerator in Montreal okay. that's playing a huge role in propelling Canada to the forefront of AI. So it's not just another tech hub. Right. There's something special about this Innocite MTL. Exactly. Okay, tell me more. They go beyond the typical funding and mentorship. Uh-huh. What's really interesting is their focus on helping startups navigate the complex world of AI ethics and regulations. Oh, wow. It's like they're building a foundation for responsible AI development right from the start. That's awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like Innocite MTL is providing this launch pad for startups. Yes. But what about the bigger picture? Sure. What's making Montreal and Canada as a whole yeah. so attractive to AI innovators in the first place? There are a few key factors at play. Sure. First, Montreal boasts a world-class research ecosystem. Nice. We're talking about universities like McGill and the University of Montreal. Oh, yeah. Churning out top-tier AI talent and groundbreaking research. So impressive. Then you have the government stepping up with targeted investments and policies that are designed to nurture AI development. Oh, wow. It's like they're creating the perfect environment for AI to flourish. So it's this combination of brain support and a bit of government love, basically. You could say that. Right. And the article brings this to life. Yeah. The, the story of Lena and her startup, DeepMind Solutions. Okay. She's based in Quebec City. Cool. And had this vision of using AI to tackle climate change. Okay, I'm already hooked. Climate change and AI, that's a powerful combination. It is. But I imagine that getting a venture like that off the ground comes with a ton of hurdles, right? Absolutely. Frankly. Then Lena faced the same challenges many startups do. Okay. Funding, scaling, For sure. and finding the right expertise. Makes sense. And that's where Innocite MTL's network proved invaluable. I see. Yeah. Through them, she connected with Dr. Hassan, a leading AI researcher at the University of Montreal, nice. who specialized in climate modeling. Oh. This connection wasn't just about mentorship. Right. It brought essential expertise to the table. Okay. Helping them overcome technical roadblocks and refine their AI model. That's incredible. So what exactly did they create? Yeah. Give us the technical nitty gritty. The article doesn't get into too much technical detail. Oh. But it mentions they developed an AI-powered climate prediction model that's incredibly accurate. Wow. Think about that for a second. Yeah. An AI that can predict climate shifts with a high degree of accuracy could be absolutely game-changing. You're not kidding. It could transform how we prepare for natural disasters, yep. manage resources, right. and even approach climate change mitigation. For sure. So yep. what happened next? Did their work catch the eye of investors? Yes. Awesome. The attention and funding poured in, allowing DeepMind Solutions to scale globally. Wow. What's even more inspiring is that Lena didn't stop there. Really? She became a vocal advocate for using AI responsibly and ethically. Ensuring this powerful technology is harnessed for good. Okay, I have chills. That's the kind of story that gives you hope about the future. It's a great story. It seems like Innocite MTL was a crucial stepping stone in her journey. Absolutely. And this is just one example oh. of the many success stories coming out of this ecosystem. Yeah, and what's fascinating is that Innocite MTL's impact goes beyond just individual startups. Hush. They're playing a significant role in shaping Canada's AI landscape, uh -huh. promoting collaboration, nice. and setting a high bar for ethical AI development. This is already blowing my mind, and I can't wait to unpack more. Me too.
but I think we've got a good foundation for now. Yeah, I think so too. In part two, we'll explore some of the other key players in Canada's AI ecosystem and dive deeper into how the government is contributing to this incredible growth. Looking forward to it. So stay tuned for that. Great. All right, so we've established that Canada's AI scene is buzzing. Yeah. And Innocite MTL is like this awesome incubator for startups. Right. But the article hints that there's a whole network of support beyond that. Oh, for sure. What are some of the other key players helping to fuel this AI engine? Well, one organization that really stands out yep. is the Quebec Artificial Intelligence Institute. Oh, wow. Or as it's known in French. Okay. The Institut Québécois d'Intelligence Artificielle, Art IAQ for short. Right. They act as a bridge between the cutting edge research happening in labs uh -huh. and the real world problems AI can solve. So it's like they're taking those complex algorithms right. and turning them into actual applications that can benefit society. Exactly. They're all about making AI practical and relevant. Cool. And then you have universities like Université Laval okay. pumping out graduates with specialized AI skills, oh. feeding the talent pool for these startups and research institutions. So smart. It's a self-sustaining cycle of innovation. That makes a lot of sense. But what about the role of the Canadian government? Sure. We touched on it briefly, but the article suggests they're pretty involved in this whole AI boom. Oh, absolutely. Really? In fact, the Canadian government has been incredibly proactive in supporting AI development. Okay. They've launched several initiatives specifically designed to fund AI research, mm -hmm. help startups access capital, nice. and attract international talent. Yes, awesome. It's like they're sending a clear message, Canada is open for AI business. That's really impressive. Yeah. Are there any specific programs or initiatives you found particularly interesting? Well, one that immediately comes to mind yeah. is the Montreal Institute for Learning Algorithms, okay. better known as Millet. Millet. Yeah, it's basically a magnet for some of the brightest minds in AI. Cool. Attracting researchers and scientists who are pushing the boundaries of deep learning. Hold on, deep learning. Yeah. For those of us who aren't AI experts, what exactly is that? Great question. Thanks. Think of deep learning as a type of AI that learns by processing massive amounts of data. Okay. Kind of like how our brains work. But on a much larger scale, I see. it's behind a lot of the AI applications we see today. Like what? Like facial recognition, uh, language uh, translation, I and am. even self-driving cars. So Mial is at the forefront of this cutting-edge technology. That's pretty cool. It is. But are they just focused on theoretical research? Well, or are they actually working on real-world applications? It's a bit of both. Okay. They definitely have a strong research focus. Yeah. But they're also actively partnering with industry to translate their findings into practical solutions. That's great. It's this blend of academic rigor and real world application that makes Milal so unique. So they're not just ivory tower academics. They're rolling up their sleeves and getting involved. Oh, like it. Exactly. Are there any other government backed initiatives that are contributing to this AI ecosystem? Absolutely. Another one worth mentioning okay. is CIFAR, yeah. the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. Okay. They're known for funding what they call high-risk, high-reward research. What does that mean? The kind of bold, innovative projects that have the potential to revolutionize entire fields. So they're not afraid to gamble on those big ideas that could really shake things up. Exactly. It's a testament to their commitment to pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI. So cool. But beyond specific organizations, yeah. Canada has also implemented this ambitious plan called the Pan-Canadian AI Strategy. Wait, a whole national strategy dedicated to AI. Tell me more about that. It's essentially a coordinated effort between the federal government and various provinces Oi. to establish Canada as a global leader in AI development. Yeah. And use well, I, think of it as a unified approach, okay. ensuring that everyone's on the same page when it comes to supporting and nurturing AI innovation. So it's not just Montreal or Quebec. Mm -hmm. It's a nationwide commitment to AI. That's a bold move. It is. And it seems to be paying off. Yeah. What's interesting is that a key aspect of this strategy yeah. is fostering a culture of responsible AI development. That's huge. They're not just focused on the technology itself. Right. They're also thinking about the ethical implications, uh -huh. mm -hmm. ensuring that AI is used for the benefit of society. That's a great approach. Wow, that's encouraging to hear. Yeah. It sounds like they're really trying to strike that balance between innovation and responsibility. Exactly. And, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. Canada has always been a country that values diversity, yeah. inclusion, right. and social responsibility. Right. 
So it's not surprising that these principles are also being applied to their approach to AI development. It's inspiring to see a country taking such a thoughtful approach. I agree. But let's be honest. Yeah. There's also a competitive element to all of this, right? Oh, definitely. Other countries are also pouring resources into AI research and development. Yeah, it's a global race. Right. And Canada knows it needs to stay ahead of the curve. For sure. But I think their unique approach might be their secret weapon. What do you mean? This blend of technical expertise, ethical considerations, uh. and collaborative spirit is what sets them apart. You're right. It's not just about building the most powerful AI. It's about building the right AI. Exactly. AI that's beneficial to society. Yeah. Respects human values. Right. And right. tackles the challenges we face as a global community. And that's where the story of Lena and DeepMind Solutions comes full circle. Oh, yeah. It's a perfect example of how Canada's supportive AI ecosystem can translate into real world impact. Right. Addressing global challenges like climate change. It's such a powerful reminder that AI isn't just about algorithms and data. I agree. It's about human ingenuity yeah. and the potential to make a real difference in the world. Absolutely. And this wow. brings us to an intriguing question. Okay. What other world challenges might Canadian AI startups tackle in the future? That's a fantastic question. Yeah. I can't wait to explore that further. Me too. But I think we've covered a lot of ground on this part. We certainly have. We've explored the collaborative spirit, yes. the government's role, and the incredible work being done by organizations like Mila and Sifar. Very cool. But we're not quite finished yet. Uh. In part three, we'll delve into the potential challenges and opportunities that lie ahead for Canada's AI ecosystem. Oh, okay. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so we've painted a pretty impressive picture of Canada's AI landscape so far. It's a great story for sure. Yeah, that. this collaborative spirit, yeah. this strong government backing, uh -huh. and this groundbreaking research. It's really exciting stuff. It is, but every success story has its challenges. Right? Well, of course, yeah. What are some of the hurdles Canada might face as it continues on this AI journey? Well, you're absolutely right. No journey is without its rumps in the road. Right. One of the key challenges highlighted in the article okay. is the need to attract and retain top AI talent. Makes sense. Canada has done a great job so far, Yeah. but the global demand for AI expertise is exploding. For sure. So staying competitive is crucial. So it's like a constant tug of war for the best and brightest. Right. Precisely. Okay. And it's not just about attracting talent. Uh -huh. It's also about creating an environment where these brilliant minds can thrive and yeah. do their best work. For sure. That means providing the right resources, okay. fostering a culture of innovation, right. and offering competitive compensation packages. So it's about creating a complete ecosystem that supports AI professionals at every stage of their careers. Exactly. What else does the article mention in terms of potential challenges? Another key point yeah. is the need for continuous investment in research and development. I see. AI is such a rapidly evolving field. Yeah. Standing still is basically moving backward. Right. Canada needs to keep pushing those boundaries, yeah. exploring new frontiers, oh. and supporting those audacious moonshot ideas that could lead to the next big breakthrough. It's like they can't afford to rest on their laurels. They have to keep pushing forward. Yeah, definitely. But it's not just about technological advancement, is it? The article also emphasizes the ethical dimension of AI. That's a crucial point. For sure. It's not enough to just create powerful AI systems. Right. We need to ensure they're used responsibly, ethically, and for the benefit of society. Absolutely. This means addressing concerns about bias in algorithms, okay. protecting privacy, yeah. and mitigating potential job displacement. Those are some heavy considerations, but it sounds like Canada is taking them seriously. They seem to be very aware of these challenges, yeah. and it's woven into their overall AI strategy. Nice. I like that. But there's another interesting dynamic at play. Okay, what's that? Competition. Ah, right. Other countries are also investing heavily in AI. Right. So Canada needs to find ways to differentiate itself and maintain its edge. It's like a global AI race. It is. And everyone's vying for a spot on the podium. Yeah, that's one way to think about it. What do you think gives Canada an advantage in this competition? I think their secret weapon lies in the unique combination of factors we've been discussing. The collaborative spirit, yeah. the strong ethical focus, uh -huh. 
and the government's commitment to creating a supportive ecosystem. Right. It's this blend that could really set them apart. It's almost like they're taking a more holistic approach. It is. It's not just about the technology. Oh, right. It's about the people, the values, and the impact on society. Exactly. And if they can continue to leverage these strengths effectively, yeah. Canada has the potential to not only be a leader in AI innovation, <laughs> but also a global model for responsible AI development. It's exciting to imagine the possibilities. Thinking back to Lena's story, it's clear that Canada's approach is already bearing fruit. Yeah, it's a really inspiring example. It is, but what about the future? What other world challenges might they tackle using this incredible technology? That's a great question. Thanks. And it really speaks to the broader impact of AI. We're yeah. talking about potentially revolutionizing healthcare, oh, wow. education, uh -huh. environmental sustainability, and yeah. so much more. That's amazing. The possibilities are vast. It's mind boggling to think about the potential breakthroughs that might emerge from this hub of innovation. I agree. As we wrap up this deep dive, okay. what are your final thoughts for our listeners? Well, I think the key takeaway here okay. is that Canada is not just participating in the AI revolution. Huh? They're actively shaping it. I like that. They're taking a thoughtful, responsible, and collaborative approach. Yeah. Which I think is something worth celebrating and learning from. It's been an incredible journey exploring Canada's AI landscape with you. So for anyone who wants to dig deeper, I highly recommend checking out the original Tatanka article. It's a great article. And exploring the links they provide. Yeah. Especially the series on investing in AI, why Canada's leading the way. Yeah, those are really insightful. You might just discover your next aha moment. And who knows? Yeah. Maybe this deep dive will inspire some of you listening to become part of this exciting story unfolding in Canada. That would be awesome. The future of AI is being written right now, yeah. and it's a fascinating time to be involved. It really is. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll catch you next time for another fascinating exploration into the world of innovation and technology. See you then.